Well, we're uh, excited to get on to the next challenge, and uh, it will be a challenge. I think we're going to go into a really uh, hostile environment that we haven't seen uh, yet this year. And uh, North Carolina State's been able to win a lot of football games here in the recent past, and uh, they've got a really strong physical football team, uh, especially on defense. Uh, they're aggressive. Uh, they play downhill. Uh, they stop the run. Uh, they're very athletic on offense. You know, when you have a veteran quarterback uh, who's in charge, uh, you know, that gives you that experience that you need. So we'll have our hands full. We have to have a good week of practice. It'll be here before we know it, and uh, we're looking forward to getting things going. Coach Jawar said last week after the game he feels like he could be one of the best running backs in the nation. He's definitely got the stats to back it up, but what's something that you want to maybe see him keep improving on down the road to go from underrated to on everybody else's radar? Well, Jawar's done a really good job. Uh, he's very humble. He works really hard. Um, he's got speed, uh, shiftiness in, in, in the hole. Uh, he's got really good hands, I think. You know, anytime uh, you're playing well, you've got to just make sure you still have that same hunger and that you're identifying whatever weaknesses that uh, have shown up and you're working hard to improve it. So I just think uh, continuing to work hard and um, – going as hard and as fast as he can at all times and, and, and being solid uh, in, in every aspect, uh, running, catching, and blocking is, is just the small things, but he's done everything we've asked uh, to this this date, and I think he'll continue to improve. And then NC State has been really, really solid defensively against teams in the red zone. What have you seen maybe early on uh, with what they're doing well, and what's it going to take to be able to for you guys to finish when you guys get close to the end zone? Well, NC State plays an aggressive style defense, and uh, give you a little different look than the traditional look uh, with their fronts and, and, and how they have guys on the edge and uh, their blitz packages. So they're very aggressive in their approach. And I just think that uh, they're going to challenge you to make plays. Uh, you're going to have to win some one-on-one -on -one battles. They're going to load the box and, and stop the run. Um, so I just think they're very well coached and, and, and they play very aggressive. Jeff, you mentioned the uh the environment down there. Based on what you've seen so far, your team's demeanor and how they've handled the other challenges, do you feel pretty good about the, you know, them handling the first road game or first true road game? Well, I think our team will be prepared for it. Uh, you know, we work a lot on uh, you know silent counts and uh, noise. Uh, level and, and that's what you kind of deal with the noise um, and being able to not uh, allow that to distract you from what you have to get done both on both sides of the ball and I just think um, when you play in that type of environment if, if, if the other team gets momentum and, and the crowd gets loud you've got to be able to block that out and, and still be able to play hard and, and, and stay concentrated and focus on what you have to do but uh, you know just like anything when you have the, the 12th man on your side uh, and, and the fans are into it uh, it can be an advantage. So we've got to try to negate that as much as we can. Yeah, Armstrong's a veteran quarterback, been around. I had a good game against Louisville a couple of years ago, and uh, their offensive coordinator, I think you played against last year when was at Syracuse. Uh, what's the key to stopping their offense, and, and what specifically do, do they try and do the most? Well, I think uh, you're talking about a veteran offensive coordinator who's been there and done that. He does a very, very good job, and uh, he's been with this quarterback uh, before. And, um, you know, I think they're, you know, they're able to – Give you some different uh, looks, uh, have some balance. Um, you know, they, they have a couple different protection schemes they use to take advantage of teams that want to play aggressive on them. Uh, they're able to get the ball to their playmakers. He always had a little. He always has a little creativity to what he's doing. And I just think when you have a veteran quarterback who's able to handle that, it will allow you to you know, try to game plan against what he's seen to this point, and uh, and, and try to create some big plays. So I just think uh, you know, veteran coordinator, uh, veteran quarterback equals. You know, we have to you know be very prepared for him. If I don't think you've, have you played a game at Carter Finley? Have you coached a game there? I do not think I have. It, it, do you, what do you know about, like, it always seems to be such a kind of a crazy environment there and they say it's sold out and it's going to be, you know, a Friday night game. What, what do you, what do you kind of expect from that environment? Well, when you look at, uh, 
their first two home games being sold out. Now this one being sold out. I mean, that's that's fans that are passionate about uh, their team, and that'll be into the game. And uh, anytime you have a night game, it can create a little more of a. Uh, a wild and hectic atmosphere that I'm sure they're going to uh, cherish uh, to get done. So our players have to be prepared for it, and I think uh, when you play in that, you've got to try to start fast. Uh, you've got to keep the game close early on uh, and not let anything get out of whack uh, or that thing can build, and it can get uh, you know even, even louder. So I just think all those things are important. Um, and, um, you know, while we've played uh, away games, I don't think we've seen this type of uh, atmosphere to date. So we've got to be prepared for it and be able to adjust to anything that comes up. Jeff, what have you seen from the defense so far? And how much do you feel like they've taken a step uh, with defending Castellanos last week? And then what do you kind of expect for, for them this week against someone like Brendan Armstrong? Well, I think we were uh, more aggressive in our approach last week, uh, and it had some advantages. Um, and, um, you know, we've got to build on that. We've got to find ways to affect the quarterback, get after the quarterback, uh, tackle the quarterback. Uh, we, we allowed the last quarterback to escape a few times when we shouldn't, when we had free blitzers coming uh, off the edge. So we've got to get that fixed and corrected right away. Uh, that allowed him to scramble and for the receivers to a little more time to get open. We had a couple times uh, where we didn't know who exactly had the ball in the, in the zone read game they had and that created the first touchdown when we really had a corner in safety that should have been right there uh, waiting for the quarterback. They kind of followed the ball, excuse me, they followed the, the fake handoff and didn't know who had the ball. So just some small things uh, that we really got to get cleaned up. We got to be precise in what we're, we're doing. Um, I think we have to adjust and adapt the plan as well because they are going to be well coached and well schooled and they got a veteran quarterback. So I think having a little bit of creativity to slightly change uh, the plan each week is important, especially on the road at NC State. Most coaches take the opening kickoff if you win the toss. Is that something new for you to defer, and is it hard to do? Well, actually, it is something new. You know, years ago, we used to always take the ball first. Um, for whatever reason, over the past 10 years, um, you know, we've had way more success uh, deferring uh, than we have accepting the ball at the beginning. Now, sometimes weather will dictate that, but you know, a lot of times if you defer and you create a stop, you've got the advantage. Uh, and then getting the ball in the second half is very important to start the second half. And for whatever reason, in our past, when the other team has got the ball to start the second half and gone down and scored, it is not equal to good game for us. So I just think we, we've calculated that and we've added that up. Um, we talk about it all the time, but you know, right now we're four for four on winning the toss, and uh, we're four for four on, on winning games. So that's added to the percentage of uh, deferring. So we probably will do that again. Jeff, um, when you play a game like this, do you practice at night any this week? Do you pipe in noise? Do you do anything to try and create the kind of environment you might face on Friday night? Well, in fall camp, we had a couple night practices for this exact reason, for night games, and to adjust to that uh, as far as... Uh, so we will we will just practice uh, during the day uh, this week. But the noise, uh, without question, is the factor. So yes, we pipe in the noise. Uh, we've done it uh, for all of our away games uh, when we weren't for sure quite how loud it was going to be. Uh, this one is for sure is going to be loud. So the, the noise will be going a lot. Uh, being able to communicate, uh, whether by hand signal or sideline signals, is going to be important that we do on offense, but actually on defense as well. So I just think uh, working that crowd noise constantly and having that uh, out there, you know, we've done it for years yeah, where, where we've been, and it is beneficial. You have to, you know, do it during practice. Uh, you know, even where we've been before, our guys normally stay after practice for five or ten minutes and go over that a little bit more uh, as far as having the, the noise and the communication. And, um, you know, you do the best job you can. It, it, it does um, always uh, favor the home team uh, because, you know, you've got to go to a silent count. You've got to do things that make you cause to sit up at the lot of scrimmage longer than you want, uh, which can cause some false starts and some leaning and moving that you don't want to have happen. You know, all these little five-yard penalties can add up, so we got to make sure we keep that to a minimum. Uh, Jeff, 
half. Uh, obviously, Jamari Thrash is going to be the main guy that opposing defenses are going to scheme against. But how encouraging was it to see Jack establish a repertoire with multiple different receivers in that deep uh, passing game on uh, against Boston College? And how much more difficult does that make this offense to contain, knowing that it's not just going to be Jamari Thrash that opposing defenses has to wor have to worry about going over the top? You know, we've worked hard at uh, developing playmakers, and that'll always be uh, an important part of getting better. Uh, I think our guys have worked hard. Uh, some guys emerged this past week and did a really good job. Uh, we got to continue to keep working through that and making sure that our quarterback is comfortable spreading the ball around. Um, you know, I think we have. You know, like I said after the game, we got a group of guys that really want to do well. Uh, some are young, some are new. There's some nuances they just got to continue to work through. You never know when your number's going to get caught or where you may have your big breakout game, but you got to be ready for it. So I just think we got to keep working through it, and that's you know in the passing game and the running game. And uh, but I like the work ethic they've had. We just got to make sure we continue to instill uh, confidence in them every day, so that you know when we take the field against some big games coming up, we're ready to play football. Jeff, you got Nate Kariski, a touchdown against Boston College. Um, are you pleased with how the progression of the tight end spot has developed over the year, and, and does it look like an area that could see increased attention as the season goes on? Well, we want that area to continue to improve. Nate uh, is a really good young tight end who just hasn't played a whole lot, so we just got to continue to get, let him gain experience. Um, you know, that position just doesn't have a whole lot of experience, and I just think, uh, you know, there's only so many plays you can run. You've got to make sure you're scoring points, moving the ball, being productive. Uh, yes, we want to continue to work through that and get those guys some touches and catches and get them involved. Uh, you know, they've done a solid job in the running game. We just haven't been able to get them the ball as much in the passing game, but I think, you know, as we proceed forward, we would like for that area to improve. But, uh, you know, those guys are giving really good effort. They're working hard. They're studying. It's just the experience factor uh, was not there. We just got to continue to work through that. Before the season got started, you talked about Ashton kind of being the, the leader of this defense and kind of everything going through him a little bit. How have you seen that play out so far this season, and what have you just seen from him in terms of his play, uh, maybe not statistically yet, but as far as just getting those pressures on the quarterback and you know making things uncomfortable for offenses? You know, Ashton's done a really good job. He works really hard. He's athletic. He's strong. He's tough. He's been able to stay healthy. Um, you know, he's somebody an offense has to, 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 to factor into their plan. Uh, I think uh, even Stephen Heron on the other side has been a, done a really good job. He's been really close to making some big plays and just missed a couple. We even talked about the other day. I, I, I like the production uh, and the work ethic he's had, but I know he can make even more plays. The interior is getting better. Uh, I think Terry Quinn has been a great leader at the linebacker spot. He's made a lot of plays for us. He plays hard. He can tackle. He can hit. And that position's improving. And of course, um, you know, quite a few guys in the secondaries have, have played. But I think Jarvis and Quincy are two veterans that uh, when you can really isolate those guys one-on-one -on -one and, and, and take away their outside receivers, it allows the other guys to, to, to play even better. So I think it's continuing to develop playmakers there. But definitely Ashton, uh, you know, has been solid every game. Jeff, uh, Jalen Alderman made a name for himself uh, when he scored a touchdown a couple years ago on an interception. He had eight tackles Saturday, which is a career high. How's he improved and what's he done to, to get better? Well, Jalen has re worked really hard. He earned the starting spot. Um, we haven't rotated as much at that position as we normally would because uh, him and Terry Quinn have been solid, productive players for us. Um, you know, continuing to be in the right spot at the right time and know exactly uh, you know where he's got to you know fit the run and, and make the tackle and. Uh, be in the passing lane uh, when he reads play action and being able to adjust to that is continuing a progression that we're doing. But, you know, he gives great effort. And, uh, you know, those two linebackers, uh, you know, will hit and tackle and strike. And we just want to continue to gain, uh, improve their knowledge and experience and, and, and know all of what's going on and nuances of playing uh, that linebacker position. But we like what we've seen and we want to continue to hopefully build some depth there as well. Jeff, how much uh, college or NFL games do you watch during the season and, and perhaps jot down concepts or plays or things you might want to add to what you guys do? Or is that, or is that more of an off-season kind of thing? 
It's definitely an off-season uh, project, but no, actually during the season, uh, you know, quite a bit. Uh, so, of course, if we see something uh, that we'd like, it can be jotted down. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to watch a few other teams throughout the week uh, both at both levels and uh, just get a grasp of what's working and, and, and what uh, – you know they're doing and that's just kind of common film viewing that we do and uh, you know we even try to do it with the defense as well so I just think it's important that you you spend enough time um, coaching your team and getting better, better and prepared but you know sometimes there are a few teams that stand out that you just want to peek at hey why are these guys playing so good and what are they doing to shut people out or what are they doing to score points or what are they doing to create big plays so you just kind of spend a little extra time doing that and um, you know, I think it's important to do that. Uh, you know, you want to be really good at what you're doing without question. You want to continue to improve on your strengths. But uh, having a different wrinkle every now and then uh, is vital to success, in my opinion. And throwing the other team off uh, by, by changing is, is, is important. Yeah. We got a concert uh, going on. Can you wait till the music's over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're good. Your team made a jump up in the computer polls. You're on the brink of making the top 25 in the writer's coach's polls. Okay, any attention at all to that, or do you have to talk to your players about totally ignoring it? Well, I think everybody looks at it on their own. Um, you know, I think, uh, of course, um, you know, we've got to prove to people how good we are, and uh, we've got a great opponent coming up where we can either prove to people that we are good, or uh, or we got to figure out how much longer or how much more we got to put in to get to that point. But uh, you know, this is a game that really can. Um, showcase what you're all about going on the road against a good opponent and uh, like I said it can be a game that you, you got to pick up the pieces and move forward on so you got to we got to work hard to win this football game and I think of course as dull and as boring as it is it's a one game season we got to put everything on this game we got to try to win it uh, we've got to build on the, the good things we've done and improve the things that we've uh, need to get better at but uh, you know being aggressive in, in, in trying to go for the win in all three segments will be vital to us having a chance to win and, and one follow up it just was announced that the Notre Dame game is going to be 730 on ABC the following week so it's another chance for a big showcase well I'm, I'm We've got some good music in here. I'm not going to get distracted by that or any other game other than the North Carolina State game. But uh, we, you know, anytime we get a chance to showcase um, what we're all about, it's an important uh, piece of, of, of getting better and, and, and proving our worth. So we're looking forward to any opportunity that comes about. You said you were going to review the film of the cartwheel. So what did you think? Well, I did review it, and you know, for a, a big fellow that weighs over 300 pounds, I, I give it a you know an, at least a nine. Uh, and, uh, so, you know what, uh, Willie actually is very athletic. Um, you know, we, we always screw around. We have some trick plays. You know, we have some plays we throw it back to him. And he's got natural hands. So this is a guy that you know, if we did need him to do the splits, I bet he I bet he could do it. Jeff on the lighters <laughs> uh, as well. Uh, it's rumored that Taylor Swift's coming to the stadium <laughs> in about six months or somewhere in there. Will you buy tickets for Donna and uh, Oscar and Greg and his family? Well, they'll, they'll, they'll want me to for sure. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, you know, my family likes to go to some of those shows, so I'm sure if, if someone's coming in town, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll probably be there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff.